Hello everyone, welcome to Eastman Community Music School faculty feature. My name is Kenneth Kam. I am the ECMS classical guitar and lute intern. The music you just listened to is a classical guitar piece called Un Suano en la Foresta by Agustin Barrios Montgomery. In today's faculty feature, I would like to give a mini lesson for classical guitar and lute. I will introduce and compare some basics of the two plucked string instruments. At the end of this video, I will also play you some music on both instruments. So let's get this lesson started. Classical guitar has six strings. They are all nylon strings. As you can see, there is a sound hole on the screen with a beautiful rosette decorating it. I often recommend beginners to choose a nylon strung guitar simply because it is very easy to play, especially for the left hand. One very unique feature of all the classical guitarists is our right hand nail shape. We often have to shape each individual nail carefully and specifically in order to help us to produce nice, warm, beautiful and rounded tones just like oboe and bassoon players shaping their reeds. The pictures you're seeing at the moment is the right hand of the famous classical guitarist, David Russell. So here's a picture of the tuning of a six string classical guitar. Some of you might not know, classical guitar actually is a transposing instrument. We read the octavo clef, and our sounding pitch is actually an octave lower than is written. The interval of a classical guitar is roughly a little bit more than three octaves. Compared to other guitar players, classical guitarists would often use footstool or different types of guitar support to help stabilizing the guitar in order to maximize our playability. Here are some of the important tips for classical guitar playing posture. It is of vital importance to remember that we need to play with the tip of our left hand fingers, and we put them near the frets, but not on them. As for the right hand, the thumb should be in front of the fingers, with the wrist in line with forearm. Before we move on to talk about the lute, Let's listen to the rest of the Un Suanio en la Floresta by Agustin Barrios Mongray. This piece titled Un Suanio en la Floresta, which means a dream in the forest, is a typical of Barrios' romantic style and is technically demanding for the player, requiring exceptional stretches of the left hand, the use of the 20th fret, and various right hand techniques, including tremolo. The piece reflects the composer's appreciation of the beautiful scenery of his native Paraguay.
Now we move on to talk about the lute. There are many different types of lutes. Today we are solely focusing on the Renaissance lute. Renaissance lute can be considered as the great great grandfather of the classical guitar. In the Renaissance era, the lute was the most popular instrument in the Western world. In fact, the lute is related to the pipa. The pipa was imitated in the Middle East, where they developed the oud, which was introduced into Europe. The lute was the most popular instrument in the Renaissance, and was played by every educated member of society, including Leonardo da Vinci, Galileo, and Shakespeare. They all played the lute. It was the guitar of its day. The popularity was due to the delicacy and refinement of the lute, whereas loud instruments were considered vulgar at that time. Next, I would like to show you a picture of the rosette of the Renaissance lute. As you can see, there are many strings on the lute, and it can be quite confusing at the first glance. For this type of lute, we call it the eight-chord lute. There are in total 15 strings on the instrument. In fact, you can see almost all the strings are in pair except one string. We call that particular string the chanterelle which has the highest pitch of the instrument. The paired strings, we call them courses. The double courses create a richer, more colorful sound than single strings, much like a 12-string guitar. Here, I would like to show you a chart for the Renaissance 8 chord lute tuning. As you can see, the chanterelle chord 1 has the highest pitch of the instrument, which is G. Now, I would like to show you a 1 minute video of the unique right hand technique on the Renaissance lute, in which we call it the thumb under technique. This technique is unique to lute playing only. And here's another video to show you the lute playing in a different angle.
As you might have already observed in the two videos, the players play without nails, and the right hand technique is completely different than the classical guitar right hand. The thumb is not in front of the fingers, but actually behind the fingers. I hope you find this mini lesson helpful and informative. If you are interested in picking up the guitar or the lute, please feel free to go to EZMS website to register for lessons. I would love to show you more and show you the fun of playing both instruments. Last but not least, I would like to show you my performance at the Washington Square Series EZMS Faculty Concert of the Fort Galliard by John Dowland. Enjoy! Thank you.